Here's my strategy for overcoming lust. If you're interested in learning more, then definitely stay tuned. Hey everyone, Caroline Roberts here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about overcoming lust. Now, for those of you guys who are familiar with my story, if you've heard my testimony before, part of my testimony is that God actually delivered me from same-sex attraction and pornography addiction. And I've been free from this for many years now. And many of you guys ask questions under my videos or whenever I share my testimony. And you wanna know the strategy and the specific steps that I took in order to overcome lust and walk in the freedom and the liberty that God has for us. So that is why I am creating this video. I'm gonna give you guys two main steps that you can take in your own life, wherever you find yourself in, to combat this spirit of lust, to combat whatever it is that you're struggling with. If that's pornography addiction, perversion, lust, whatever that is, masturbation. That's another thing that I talk about. I have a video about whether or not that is a sin. So let's just hop right into it. I want you to keep in mind that the battle against lust is a spiritual war. It is a fight. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in heavenly realms. So when it comes to dealing with the spirit of lust, sometimes we try to just deal with it by outward means. Maybe you try to, you know, slam your computer on the floor. You try to do some sort of outward act of control and you try to do some outward action that you hope you know will fix the issue but we have to understand that this is a spiritual war this is a spiritual fight a spiritual battle and it needs to be fought by spiritual means by spiritual weapons now there are practical steps that you can take to help assist you in this, you know, battle of overcoming lust. And I will give you practical tips that you can carry out. But at the same time, I want you to recognize that this is a root issue. This is a heart issue. Now, I just want to cover something off that because I know some people might be in the comment section and say, you know, sexuality is a natural thing. You know, it's part of our human nature to experiment and to be sexual. And I want to preface this video by saying, yes, God created sex. But at the same time, we cannot forget we all as people were born into sin. So even though sexuality may be a natural thing, we have a sinful nature. So just because something is natural does not mean that it's right. A lot of people say, you know, I was born this way. I was born feeling gay. I was born into homosexuality. Like I felt like this since I was a child. But again, we were all born into sin. Just because you were born that way, just because you felt that way since you were a child, we have to understand it is the sinful nature. And that is the purpose of being born again. We are born again and become saved when we accept Jesus and we join the family of God. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. So it doesn't matter what you naturally feel like doing. It doesn't matter how you're born. It doesn't matter the sinful nature that came into this world with you when Jesus died for your sins on the cross. And if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he makes all things new. The Bible says that we put on a new man created in God in righteousness and holiness. We put on the new man. We take off the old man. We die to the old man. We die to the flesh and we live by the spirit. So there is truly a transformation and a change that takes place when you are born again, when you are saved as a believer in Jesus. So we are in a battle. We're in a spiritual fight. And the first tip that I want to give you of what to do in order to combat this spirit of lust is 
make sure that you have your choice weapon. What is the choice weapon? Your choice weapon is the word of God. The Bible declares that God's word is sharper than any two edged sword. Talk about a spiritual weapon. It says piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Bible cuts, it divides things very precisely. So I want you to picture this, the sinful nature that we talked about, and then there's God's nature when we become saved. When you read the word and you have the sword of the spirit and you have the Bible, it is easy to cut in between and make a specific incision to separate the sinful nature from the nature of God created in righteousness. And every time you read your Bible, that two edged sword is cutting in between the pieces. It's cutting. It's cutting away at the lust. It's cutting away at the addictions. It's very specifically cutting everything away that is not like God. That's why when you read the Bible and you read something that is convicting to you, you come across a verse that is convicting to you. It feels like you've been cut because literally in the spirit realm, God's word is doing a cutting motion and he's carving you out beautifully in his image. Not only is the sword of God, the word of God, a weapon that we can use to fight against the things that are unlike God internally, but it's also a weapon we can use to fight against the things that are not like God externally. And it's twofold. We have to fight back. Not only do we want to be cleansed on the inside through and by God's word, because God's word is also referred to as water. In many scriptures, God's word is likened to water. It says that Jesus washes the bride, the bride of Christ, the church with the water of the word to present himself a blameless church without spot or wrinkle, without spot or blemish. So not only is God's word, the Bible, a sword, but God's word, the Bible is water. It cleanses you. If you think of cleaning a piece of meat, you're cleaning a piece of meat. You're cutting off the, the fat. You're cutting off whatever you don't need. And you're making it to its purest form. And then after you cut it off, then you cleanse it with the water. That's what the Bible does for us. So if you read the Bible every single day, I believe if you continue to read it every single day, it's going to be pretty hard for you to continue living the life that you once knew. It's going to be hard for you to continue, you know, not being able to overcome those struggles because as you read it, you're being cut. Those things are falling off. You're being transformed, but you have to keep doing it over and over and over. It's not a one time. It's not an overnight thing. It's a process or it's a journey. We have to cut away at this, cut away at that. And every time you read it, more and more will fall off. Every time you read it, more and more will you be continually transformed in the image of God. Will you be continually transformed and your mind will be continually renewed, continually renewed. But like I said, we don't just use the sword to cut off what's not like God on the inside. We use the sword to cut off what's not like God on the outside. So when you are going through your journey of overcoming lust, the enemy is going to still try to tempt you. He's going to still try to put thoughts in your mind. Just because you're tempted, just because you receive these thoughts does not mean you're in sin. But the way you respond to the thoughts you receive, the way you respond to the temptations determines whether or not it is sin for you. The Bible says to flee fornication, to flee temptations, to flee these things. So when, when you are presented with an opportunity to fornicate, you are not in sin because you are presented with the opportunity. You are in sin when you engage in that fornication rather than fleeing from it. 
When you are presented with a thought that opposes God's word, when you are presented with a perverted thought, you now have the ability with the word of God that you've been studying to cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. One practical way that I used to do this is that I would write out a whole bunch of scriptures, a whole bunch of Bible verses, you know, on index cards. I would take my index cards with me throughout the day. And whenever a perverted thought would come into my mind, I would take out my index card and I would recite it. And I would say, you know, think on things that are only lovely, that are pure, that are of good report. Write down scriptures that help you to think on things that are pure. You want to write down scriptures that reaffirm God's word, reaffirm God's will in regards to purity, in regards to holiness and righteousness. So I want to give you guys a resource. I am going to give you guys the index cards in the description box and the scriptures that I recommend if you are struggling with this. So you can download it for free, um, print out these index cards, cut them up and walk around with them. And whenever you are tempted, pull out the index card and repeat those scriptures. Fight with the word of God. Fight with the scripture. So here's my second strategy for overcoming lust. If you are fighting this war, that means that you need to take on the identity of the army that you are now a part of. And we are all as believers, a part of the army of God. And we need to take on this identity, lay down our old life as a civilian, our old life, you know, before we came to know Christ, when we were, you know, driven by our own will, by our own emotions and by our own desires. And we lay that down. And now we take on the identity of our army, the identity of the body of Christ. And we say, not my will, God but let your will be done. Some of you guys, you find it so hard to fight against these lusts and temptations and it's because your will is still your God. You're still living under your own will, but we have to submit our will unto God's. And when you do this, there is a heart change. Any soldier in an army, their heart's allegiance, their heart is all in for the cause, for the mission, and to the commander in chief. So is your heart all in for the cause, for the mission and the will of the commander in chief? Who has your heart? Where is your heart? Your heart needs to be all in it. If you want to be delivered in this thing, you have to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You have to love God. And how can you love God? I believe that there is a way to love God more. There is a strategy to grow in love with God and to fall in love with God. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I believe that there are three different types of treasures, our time, our money, and our obedience, our will. Okay. Those are the three different treasures, your time, your money and your obedience or your will. It says where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So if you want to win this battle against lust, you want to give your heart to the Lord. So your heart is no longer with the pornography. Your heart is no longer with the sin. Your heart is no longer with the masturbation. Your heart is no longer with that toxic relationship. Then I want to encourage you to take practical real life steps and actions. Invest your treasures into the kingdom of God. I said one of the treasures is time. Spend time with God every day. As you spend time with God every day, the treasure of your heart is going to start to change. The second one, money. Give to your local church. Give to the poor. Bless someone else. Give into God's will. Give into God's purpose. Allow him to be Lord over your money instead of having money as your Lord. And your heart's going to change. The third one, obedience. Begin to die to yourself. Begin to die to your own desires. Start going to God for everything, even the little things. God, what do you want me to wear today? God, what do you want me to eat today? I know, you know, you guys may think, oh, she's being too spiritual, but this is a good practice, at least for going through this journey. I believe that obedience, even in the little things, is a good thing to practice to develop your obedience muscle. I believe obedience is a muscle. The more you're obedient, then you develop a habit of dying to self and exalting God. 
dying to your own will and exalting God's will. So try to be obedient in the areas that you can so that when you finally come against that next test of obedience in the area of dealing with lust, then you have the strength to resist it. You have the strength to overcome. But if you don't practice obedience in any area of your life, then how are you going to be obedient when it comes to this area? And for me, it's like I tried my best in my situation to give my heart to God. I started to hate the things that God hates and I started to love what God loved because I was falling in love with him. Ask yourself, what are my treasures? What do I care about? What do I love? And I want you to start giving those things to God, submitting those things to God and start saying yes. Start saying yes to God whenever you can. Say yes. You can do all things through Christ. You have the strength to say yes and be obedient to God. And the more you're obedient, the more you say yes, then the more you'll be able to say yes when you're faced with a temptation for lust. The more you'll be able to say yes to God and say no to the devil. Say yes to God and say no to that temptation. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for everyone on the sound, under the sound of my voice, God. And I just declare right now that you are empowering, Lord God, each and every one of us to say yes to you each and every day, Lord God, and to say no to sin, Lord God, to say no to the sinful nature, to say no to our past, to say no to our old self, Lord God. Create in us a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit within us, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would be our where we place our treasures, Lord God, that our heart, Lord God, would be fully invested in you, Lord God, and fully devoted to your will. I thank you, Daddy, because you are a good, good father, Lord God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are patient with us, Heavenly Father. I thank you that you are forgiving, that you are loving, that you're full of grace, that you're full of mercy. There is no condemnation in you, Heavenly Father, but you give us the confidence to overcome. You said that we can come confidence into your presence, Lord God. We can them confidently and boldly, Lord God, to your presence. And we just come together. And I stand in agreement right now that the, the, the addictions are broken in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they will be made free, Lord God, that they shall overcome. And we declare these things, Lord God, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time on my channel, do not forget to subscribe. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me for encouraging posts throughout the week. Don't forget to download your free resource in the description box to help you along this journey. All right. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next YouTube video. Until next time. Bye.